Hello, I'm Father Kevin Hanlon, member of the Marino Fathers and Brothers, and I work here at our Marino headquarters north of New York City, and I welcome you to this month's prayer guild. This month, of course, we celebrate and pray to our risen Lord, who suffered and died for us. And we have celebrated a good Holy Week, I'm sure, and a very happy Easter. On Easter Sunday and during the day, we hear the gospel from uh, John chapter 20, where Mary goes to the tomb. She goes there and sees the stone is rolled away, so she runs to St. Peter, who then returns to the tomb with John, and uh, they see that, the, in fact, the stone is rolled away and that Christ is not there. And then they return to the upper room, wondering what this means. But Mary, she doesn't return. She stays there outside the tomb, weeping. At one point she looks in and she sees two angels sitting there and they say to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she says, of course, that she's weeping because she can't find her Lord. Then he, she hears the voice of someone behind her. She thinks it's the gardener who also says to her, woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? And she says the same thing. Uh, but then Christ looks at her and says, Mary. And in that instant, she can see it's not a gardener at all. It is her Lord that she has been looking for. What a joyful thing. So then she is sent by our Lord to go tell the apostles that he will be ascending to the Father. So she is sent. Now the word sent in Greek is the word that forms our, our word in the church of apostle. An apostle is a person who is sent with a message. Uh, so because of this, traditionally, uh, she has been titled, given the title many times by saints and popes as the apostle to the apostles. Isn't that wonderful? We might even say that she was the first apostle because she was sent by our Lord to speak to the disciples, to the apostles, and to tell them Christ has truly risen. So this Easter, it's, it's a good time to remember that seven years ago in 2016, Pope Francis said, you know, every year on July 22nd, we celebrate the feast day of Mary Magdalene as a very important saint, but it's not high enough. In other words, we have an opening prayer which has her name in it, but we don't say the Gloria as we would on a major feast. So he said, let's make her feast day a major feast, because after all, she was the apostle to the apostles. And he wrote a very nice homily or letter about her and since then, uh, we in the church have been celebrating Mary Magdalene in a little bit of a higher way. She's called the Apostle to the Apostles, and we, of course, are the flock of the Holy Apostles, 2,000 years later, still going strong. And we also have a message that we are sent out with, to live our lives with, to, in simple ways and sometimes dramatic ones, witness to people that Jesus Christ is truly risen and that his message and his church has a very important place in our lives. Let's always thank God for this important role he gives us and ask that with prayer and fidelity we might fulfill uh, the role he has given us. Let us now offer prayers for some of the intentions that you have sent in for this month. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For your special intentions and for your wife, Pat, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And from Effingham, Illinois, for your special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your special intentions and spiritual growth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for an anonymous request for your special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. From Carmel, New York, for your special intentions and for world peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. From Flushing, New York, we pray for your wife's recovery from her recent hospital stay and for your special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For another anonymous request, for good health and for your special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Father Juan Zuniga, Marino missionary, and his new role with the General Council. And for all the members of the Marino Prayer Guild, living and deceased, and for all of their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now join our hearts together and pray as the risen Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now let's recite this month's prayer card for Easter. Easter. O most blessed light that shines in the darkness this most blessed night, shine in my heart no less than in the world, that all might be filled with the power and glory of Jesus truly risen. Turn my mourning into joy and my tears into laughter as Easter glory spreads and overcomes sin and sadness. O Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, let me but touch your wounds you bore for love of me and all humankind. Give me this day your Easter peace and heal my wounds by your grace. May I seek and find you always in the breaking of the bread and in the least of my brothers and sisters. Amen. Alleluia. This month we put the missionary spotlight on Father Juan Suñiga, Marino missionary and priest from the great state of Texas. He was born in 1955 in San Antonio. He comes from a large Catholic family of Mexican-American heritage and uh, after high school studied to be an architect. After receiving his degree, he worked for some time as an architect, but felt something else inside, that he should follow this instinct or this call to become a missionary and a priest. He entered Marino, excuse me, he entered Marino when he was 24 years old and was ordained to the priesthood in 1988. He worked for a number of years in Hong Kong and Macau as a missionary. In 1994, he was asked to come back to the States and to work on vocations and then later on formation. After this, he, he went to Latin America, to Bolivia, to work for a number of years 
on the missions, but was recently appointed to our General Council, where he now works as our Secretary General. All of his mission work and all of the work of all Marino fathers and brothers is thanks to your prayers and generosity. So Father Juan and I join in thanking you for them and ask you for your continued prayer and support. We also ask for God's blessing upon Father Juan and upon all the members of our Marino Fathers and Brothers General Council. Our next webcast will be on May 12th, 2023, Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you and God bless you.